So, coach, I will say buongiorno and buongiorno. Welcome, welcome to Latvia. I guess this is your first time here, yes? Yep, it's my first time. I've never been here, despite, uh, especially in the summer, uh, Latvia organized pretty often uh, very interesting uh, activities with uh, youth national teams. But because I used to travel to US in the uh, summer, I've never been here before. What are the first impressions? I guess a lot of uh, hotel. Yes, <laughs> beautiful hotel, uh, nice people, very gentle. But of course, uh, I had the chance uh, just to see from the car. Uh, driving to the arena, the downtown is amazing, it's a beautiful city. And for what I heard uh, from uh, some friend of mine, for sure I will enjoy my time here. Uh, what, what did you know about Latvia so far bef before you came here? I guess, of course, uh, those are the Latvian basketball players. That's the only thing or some also outside of the sports? Uh, no, you know, of course, uh, I know something about the history of the country and uh, all the process to become independent and uh, as uh, something uh, who create, uh, you know, some I, I'm not, a, you know, so addicted to history or in general to know, but I like to know where I am, also to go deeper into the people personality, just to understand we, in which environment they grow, which type of culture they have. Uh, so I know something. I know, of course, many players and many people who are in basketball, and uh, I, I believe it's a uh, pretty good picture of the people identity in this country. Uh, no matter if it's a small country, I believe it's uh, full of uh, history, tradition and values. About Italian food, it is popular also here in Latvia. Some restaurants, of course, they are closed, but did you order something to just to try the Italian Latvian food? <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Uh, uh, to tell you the truth, right now I'm uh, just uh, using uh, the service from the hotel and not so demanding. It's a short time. I know <laughs> Italians, they have a reputation to be very demanding about food, about wine, and everything, but I'm here for my business and I'm totally devoted to my job. <laughs> okay, did you Google something about Latvia before you came here? Uh, Some words maybe? My, yeah, a little bit. I try also to speak a little bit. I saw I that. did a couple of uh, uh, I mean, uh, quotes, but uh, it's, uh, it seems to be very difficult also because I don't see any, you know, uh, similar uh, words than uh, other uh, language that I'm more familiar with. But uh, no matter what, now my friends, for example, they already start to text me from Italy, uh, you know, Paldies and Labrit and stuff like that. So step by step, I will become a little bit more familiar, but for sure not enough to learn uh, such a different language. Let's go back to the roots. If we, we talk about Latvia, your roots come from Italy. No. Tell me a short, a short story about how, how did you grow up and where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I was born in uh, Tuscany, in Grosseto, that is uh, not a big city. Is uh, on uh, in front, I mean, it's on a seaside, so it's a pretty nice place to live to grow your family, and that's what I did. I mean, I left my city pretty soon because uh, uh, I went to the university and because basketball was already part of my life, I, w I used to play basketball and I start uh, uh, very soon to be also a coach. And, uh, and I realized that uh, probably was my real, uh, I mean, uh, direction. You know, and uh, so I start to be a coach and I start to travel the country because of basketball and because of coaching. Uh, I'm pretty lucky because during my career I found uh, very nice people, great basketball player, but also nice people who inspirate my job and uh, makes me better. Uh, offer me, they offer me the opportunity to prove my values, my uh, skills. And, uh, you know, I had a career uh, who never changed uh, far from my hometown, but uh, never changed my, uh, I mean, uh, approach 
Uh, what I mean is, uh, you know, I used to repeat uh, my family that uh, I'm really proud of them because uh, they gave me uh, the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the wings to fly away, but the roots to stay connected with my territory. And that is my home, uh, that is my family, my wife. This is the place where I, where I grow my kids. In Grosseto, exactly. No matter if it's not a basketball city, and uh, my job is uh, far from there, wherever I have some time uh, free, uh, I used to come back home, and this is something who relaxed me and uh, who makes me back in, uh, in my, you know, position. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'll ask this uh, question about football. Uh, we know the popularity of football uh, of course. in Italy. Why not football? Why basketball? Uh, you know, and what sounds strange is that my city is famous for baseball, even more than football. Uh, okay, you know, I'm in a, a four kids family. I'm the third and uh, my oldest brother and sister, both they play basketball. They enjoy to play basketball. Uh, football is part of our sports culture. Of course, uh, everybody wanna play, will like to play football. If you are not able to have, a, you know, some good place in a playground or stuff like that, you can be even out of your friend's circle. Uh, so you are a little bit out of the community. Uh, football for me is nice. I follow football as a fans, as a spectator. I was not that good to <laughs> become a, a football player, but uh, basketball for me was different since the beginning. I realized pretty soon that was my, you know, uh, my environment. And uh, no matter if he's in uh, uh, playing or coaching, but was my natural environment. Which is your favorite? Football club Juventus, and this is not our best season after nine Italian title in a row. But uh, we will be back pretty soon. I'm, I'm sure about it. It has been there a situation when you play, you coach, you have a Euroleague game, for example. On the same time, there is a Champions League game, <laughs> and you, you. Of course, I remember very well. Uh, final, I mean Champions League final with Juventus playing the final and I was playing uh, game uh, s five in a very tight uh, semi-final series in Italian Championship. I remember very well we won the game, uh, it was during the football game, but okay, I'm good with uh, football, not that much to forget priorities. and. Uh, <laughs> No matter of the football game, uh, you know, I watch uh, highlights during the night, but uh, the, my, my game was more, much more important. But at the same time, when you have the half-time half break, did <laughs> no, you check I the result? Check. No, <laughs> I don't check. I don't check. Okay. If I have to check, I check basketball result, <laughs> not, not football uh, result. Uh -huh, okay. Maybe you know what happened in Italy. You can understand what happened on a football court because of the way the fans on the stage, they respond, they react. So sometimes the basketball game is going uh, normal and the people, uh, you know, uh, they... Start to cheer. Yeah, they cheer. You don't understand why. Maybe because AC Milan or FC Inter or Juventus, they score. That's the reason why. <laughs> it's Italy, you know. Also walking on the street, the people uh, sitting on a bar, watching the game, suddenly, they start to jump and cheer and uh, yell, and uh, it's funny, but uh, we are a football country. We have to accept it, but as a basketball fans, I'm really proud of, uh, of what we are doing to, you know, to resist and to find our spot. Describe me yourself as a little basketball player. You, 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 you said already that uh, pretty early you understood you want to be a coach. So you were young and you my were... My coaches understood that was my best being a coach. No, I mean, I was a pretty talented point guard, a little bit turnover prone because of the tendency to exaggerate a little bit with some, you know, nice passes instead of uh, effective passes. Uh, not a, such a great shooter maybe this is the reason why i don't achieve a level probably i i deserve or they predict on the other hand i found uh, coaches uh, around me who appreciate my approach with the game my instinct to lead the team and uh, to 
you know, because of my love for the game, uh, they try to convince me to, to start to have a, a basketball classes, uh, to, you know, to try to teach basketball to the young kids and stuff like that. And was, uh, I believe, a great suggestion. I mean, I'm still in touch with most of them because I consider uh, them the main reason why I'm doing that job and I like to share my you know, results together with them because I continue to feel them a part of my life. So first question about uh, coaching career. If you look back, you have been through very tough times uh, with the teams that are getting through tough times, but you have, uh, have managed to, to figure out and, and put all the players together and uh, win a lot of titles. Uh, could you characterize what is your important uh, achievement as a coach? You have some top three achievements? Uh, okay, maybe my first initial step was uh, because my uh, ability to recruit and to educate uh, young players. So what I did in a youth program in uh, Livorno, building uh, uh, an amazing uh, uh, cycle there, uh, recruiting and uh, uh, improving players who did all the youth program till they arrive at the first division. Uh, we were so proud to have a team completely built around the players uh, who grow in uh, this uh, program. As a coach, I won uh, three junior national title in a row, uh, who's still uh, a record for Italian basketball. No other teams was, and no other coaches uh, were able to do the same uh, in the in the future and uh, unfortunately we talk about uh, more than 20 years ago <laughs> uh, this is my first step uh, who i mean who gave uh, the probably my uh, who affect the most my style i consider myself still a coach able to valorize his personnel and his players. I never stop to educate my players, no matter that right now everybody consider me as a top level coach for uh, senior teams, you know. And now my first experience with the national team is not the first ever because I already work with the Italian national team, was a sort of a B team uh, because I remember at that time uh, we talk about 2001 our men's team was playing uh, the European Championship and we have to participate in the Mediterranean Games that is a sort of a mini Olympics. So we prepared a second team and the national team coach, he decided to give me the team. In the same summer, I was also the head coach of the under 20 national team. It was nice. This is something that I like to do. Uh, but of course, uh, my career is more connected with my experience with the top clubs. So what I remember um, the most is my seven years in uh, Siena, Montepaschi, before as assistant coach, then as a head coach. Seven years, seven national titles, uh, five Italian Cups, five Super Cups, uh, two times uh, EuroLeague Final Four. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, because uh, time change and uh, life change, uh, uh, team struggle and I have to move. And my next destination was Milano. Nobody expected uh, that choice because Milano was our bigger rival. And uh, no matter of the rivalry, I felt uh, the challenge to be there and to bring uh, the title back to Milano after 19 years. And that's what uh, happened. Uh, as I told you before, I consider myself very lucky because I had the chance to work in very important program, achieve important goals. And uh, then uh, because of this kind of experience, I had the chance to become uh, also a European coach. What I mean is uh, when you coach EuroLeague and you coach that level, uh, you have to prepare yourself not only to me consider offered coming from your country but also from outside and I'm really proud to decide to become coach in Bamberg before then in Aik Athens and then uh, in uh, Kuban uh, in uh, Locomotive uh, no matter if it was not a so successful experience but uh, you know just to give you uh, the idea. Uh, 
last not least uh, during this winter that unique opportunity to be a coach in the uh, US. Uh, G League entering the Brooklyn Nets family, something amazing, something that all the coach will like to have uh, one day when we say kids who hope to see their dreams come true. And uh, this is what happened. Short time, we entered the bubble to Orlando. It was a pretty weird environment, but uh, very challenging, very exciting. And you know, uh, life is like this. During my stay in Orlando, I received a call from the Latvian Federation. So uh, everything starts from there. And uh, it's uh, more or less this is the point. I mean, uh, I see myself as a, a youth program coach because of my uh, experience in Livorno, uh, but also as a top level coach because of what I achieved in Italy. And now as an international coach because of the opportunity to travel around Europe and around the world, uh, meet coaches, meet players, uh, you know, and uh, increase in my vision and have a wider vision about uh, basketball in general and uh, lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm. What are your top three coaches that uh, inspire you? Uh, you know, if I think about the past, there was uh, an ancient coach, now he passed away, uh, he, I mean, uh, for us uh, in my area was a sort of model, uh, Gianfranco Benvenuti. In Italy we had a pretty uh, solid school, uh, coaches school, and uh, right now Messina, I, I believe, is the name who represents the most our tradition as a coaches. And uh, all around the world, of course, there are many coaches and uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Obradovic is the coach uh, who affect the game the most at the European level. And in a new, uh, I mean, era of coaching, I hope also because we are uh, good friends, uh, Saras Jasikevicius uh, will become the uh, new name for European basketball. And I wish for him also one day the chance and the opportunity to become an NBA coach. About your last uh, club here in Europe, or in Russia, the experience in Russia, I guess there was like 12 games and then uh, they ended the contract with you. It was a surprise for you? Yeah, uh, many, many, many details surprised me. I was not prepared. Uh, I underestimate uh, some signals who arrive uh, from the previous coaches uh, when they heard that I signed a contract in, the, in this club. I underestimate some signal during the summer when it was time to uh, build a team and uh, my, you know, uh, connection with, uh, uh, with the management was not that virtuous as I used to do and I, and I was expecting. And uh, last not least, uh, the general uh, kind of organization who make me you know, very worried and uh, I realized that uh, my position was not that stable. Uh, you know, so uh, without to blame something, somebody, just uh, as a coach, you have to understand and you have to accept what happened. It's part of your job, it's part of your uh, business and uh, make good choices affect a lot your uh, you know, uh, destiny. And uh, let's stop talking about and uh, say it's uh, just a wrong choice. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you had the opportunity to go to the United States, to the G League. Uh, for some, uh, I, I think uh, for some that uh, have, have uh, followed your, your career in EuroLeague and, and European basketball, that was a surprise that, okay, Luca is going overseas to get some fresh air in G League. What was the, how hard was uh, to make this decision? Uh, it was not hard, I tell you the truth. Uh, as I told you before, uh, it's a sort of dream who came true. Uh, of course, uh, my goal one day is to be an NBA. Uh, I saw that experience as a good step to create connections, 
to build a solid uh, relationship over there. And also, you know, because of the format was a pretty uh, unique. Go into the bubble was only 25, I mean, 15 games regular season. So it was not a, such a long time. Uh, and, uh, and last, not least, uh, you know, this is a very weird moment of our community uh, all around the world as a uh, you know, uh, person uh, is very difficult to trust in the future. What happened with this virus kill our uh, you know, hope to have a nice future, change completely our uh, priorities, our lifestyle, our side of views. Uh, I, I see many people struggle and I see many people disappointed. They don't have, they don't trust the future anymore. I, I believe that my choice to go there, it's a way to feed uh, tomorrow. What I mean is uh, I saw in that uh, opportunity the chance to make something who can uh, give me again the pleasure uh, to see the future as a resource. I invest on myself, on my knowledge, no matter of the platform, of the environment, of uh, being an assistant coach in position, or uh, having only young players, uh, pretty unexperienced players, uh, facing a kind of basket that I never faced before, no matter. Uh, was a sort of, you know, statement. I want to feed my future again. I want to, you know, taste the the future and tomorrow again. And that's the way. You can talk about that or you can act in order of that. That's what I did. And I'm super happy for uh, the opportunity and uh, also for uh, what I proved being there uh, at 55, uh, living in a bubble, you know, fighting every day to adjust uh, was uh, challenging, in some way exciting. And I'm happy for, for the opportunity. So about this, uh, your new challenge, Latvian national basketball team, I guess uh, looking on your experience and if we look on financial aspects, you, you could choose uh, to coach a club. Why a Latvian national team? Uh, because uh, I'm in a moment of my career where uh, the good thing is that uh, this financial part is not a priority anymore. It's a matter to uh, make good choices. What I missed in the past, probably in my last experience in Russia, and I felt uh, like, uh, you know, it can be good for me uh, to prove my values, to, and very challenging, and also, you know, to, because I believe as a coach uh, in the values you need to work with the national team. I really believe that I can be able to boost the entire community. I really believe that uh, I can un unit uh, people, players, and I really like uh, the structure of the country, the values of the players. I know many of them. I really appreciate their approach, their attitude, and uh, their sense of belonging. And uh, you know, now in this era where uh, Basketball teams in a club looks more like a sliding door. Uh, be in a national team can really allow players and coaches to do something important for the fans, something important for the entire community, uh, lead the country uh, and be special, being special forever. Mm -hmm. Let's compare Latvian national team with a big airplane. You're the captain of the plane and uh, as we know, we have uh, business class players, first class players, economy class players. Uh, what is your role in this situation? How to unite uh, the players to go to in the one way, to the one dream? Uh, democracy, destroy barrier. There are no first class, uh, of course. Uh, I'm more than an airplane. I already spoke about a building. Uh, everybody has to know his role and everybody has to know that will be important to build a solid basement of the building. 
no matter if in the roof, for most of the people uh, are uh, the top players, no matter. Who will be part of the process, will know his role, will know his importance, and it's my job is to give everybody the right dignity. And at the end of the day, if we will achieve, it will be because of everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I met one of the uh, national basketball team players mm -hmm. on the street and, and he said, oh, I just talked to the new coach. So I, I understood uh, that you have been talking to the players, all of them, the, the biggest stars, or you have no stars? In <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I can tell you uh, very often that uh, I had a list uh, already. I, because uh, I receive a, a very important uh, legacy from uh, Coach Stil Machertz and uh, I really uh, trust on what he did uh, in the uh, last years and uh, he used, because of the rules and because of the windows, many players in the last two years during the last qualification round, I start from them and I start from the players, the most important players who was not participating only because of their duties, not because they don't want to participate. So we talk about uh, uh, more or less a circle of uh, 40 players who can be around the, uh, the national team community. I spoke with most of them. I try to connect with all of them, but because uh, they are very busy, some of them, they are playing uh, like right now in final six uh, in uh, La Estonian Latvian League. People uh, who are playing, uh, ad, I mean, abroad and uh, people who are playing in uh, NBA where, uh, you know, schedule is pretty crazy, traveling and stuff like that. But I already, I, I'm connected or I already connect with all of them and I already spoke in person with most of them and I'm very happy and uh, you know, give a sense also of my presence here. About this communication, this is more like a, a little small talk about relationship building, or you're talking already about the roles in the team? Or this is like, no, hello, it's uh, Mr. right Mr. now Monkey we are Collins. talking about uh, the kind of communication, which type of con communication channel we want to build between federation and players. And my idea is that you will never stop to be a national team player. No matter of your career, no matter of your choices, no matter of the country where you are playing or the color of your uniform. Uh, you know, is a national team uniform is printed on your skin as a tattoo. And so you never stop to be a national team coach. You will never stop to communicate with your federation and uh, with your coach. From your pers perspective, where is Latvian national basketball team? We know we have a lot of very good players, but we know we're in very difficult times right now. I know where we are. And we will start from the very bottom, you know, at the lower level. And we have to be realistic. That's what we know, no matter what we want to, or what we want to achieve. We will start from that level and we have to be worthy uh, of the level we are playing and uh, approach our next uh, step with the humility you need to win and to succeed. What is the legacy you want to bring to Latvian basketball? Uh, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, I respect the Latvian basketball tradition and history, okay? And if I have to talk about uh, my footprint, I will be happy if uh, at the end of my uh, experience here, uh, people, players, coaches who cooperate with me and uh, a manager, board, federation, fans as well, uh, I mean, uh, follow my uh, stay here and my experience here, they, I mean, found uh, the pleasure to cooperate and the pleasure to be part. I really hope to, uh, destroy also this barrier connected with uh, my uh, background, uh, my passport, my language, no matter of what, I would like the people to appreciate my effort and my desire to be part of the process. Uh, could you describe your job now? I, I understand this is not only the focus on the national team, you're focusing also on the youth, 
and the coaches, the coach youth teams, Latvian teams? No, my job is to focus on uh, men's national team. Uh, of course, because of my background and uh, my desire to have a wider vision of the basketball, I mean, how uh, Latvian players grow in which type of environment, I will try from my side to see, to understand, and just in case they need to suggest, but only if they need and if they want. But my idea is to focus on the men's national team. Right now, during my stay in Riga, the idea is to uh, connect with uh, management, to organize, to interview coaches, because I have to build my coaching staff, to prepare the summer program, we supposed to have a two training camp during the summer and a, a very useful open gym program who will allow players uh, uh, to keep in shape because uh, no matter if uh, the season uh, will finish for most of them you know pro players they used to continue to work out this is a, a country where players they have a very solid work ethic and they want to practice better to do it into a federation organization because if from one side we will work for the players on the other side we will work for the federation and for the national team as well so my job right now is to uh, take a look touch base and uh, you know uh, start to give my initial footprint uh, to the program mm -hmm. I want to talk to the former Latvian national uh, basketball coach, uh, Einas Bogatskis, and he once told that he was working together as an assistant for, for David Blatt. And even uh, if there was a day off for the team, they were sitting in the meetings for hours from early morning till uh, late evening, watching games, analyzing games about your assistants. We don't know uh, who will be assistants, but uh, what do they need to know? How many hours will they spend it together <laughs> with you? <laughs> You know, uh, I already spoke with few of them, a few of the candidates. And to tell you the truth, uh, we talk about people that like me, they really love their job. Uh, I don't want to say that we are uh, basketball sick, but we are addicted to basketball. So it's pretty normal for basketball coaches to spend uh, most of their day in basketball and uh, as, as we, I used to say, you never stop to be a national team player. Uh, we never stop to be coach. We never stop and we, we enjoy to talk about basketball. So it's not connected with your schedule, with your plan, uh, but uh, it's a uh, part of our style, you know. Share ideas, talk about basketball, usually sitting on a table, around the table. I'm Italian, so if you give me good food, and a uh, good company, we can stay for hours and hours. And big screen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why not? <laughs> or uh, maybe a flip chart and uh, a pen. I'm more, uh, you know, XOX person uh, because of my generation. I'm good with in technology. I'm not that good, but I'm familiar with, uh, you know, my pencil and uh, papers. Mm -hmm. Describe your summer. Uh, how do you expect? Ah, what I expect, okay, <laughs> very busy summer. I expect a very busy summer. Uh, I hope that uh, we will use uh, all this uh, moment together to prepare uh, the next summer activity for the national team in the best way possible, to have a very good organization. I'm, I see that there are uh, very good people around who really knows the job, who are trying to understand what are my needs, uh, but on the other hand, uh, not to forget that I'm a part-time coach. So my other side is connected with my job with the clubs. So I expect also a very busy summer, trying to build a team, trying to build another coaching staff, and, uh, and, you know, and build a system and uh, you know, an organization who will allow me during the summer and the pre-qualification round or during the winter winter windows to stay away to follow the national team and not to suffer too much so will be very important uh, hope to have good choices also in that side of my job
Mm -hmm. Last question, what do you want to achieve with the national team of Latvia? Uh, what we prove to the serve on the court. You know, basketball never lie. So, hope to have a, a team who will play with a good spirit, uh, that deserve the support of the fans, and uh, that prove the pleasure to be part of and to participate. Then uh, we will see at the end. But uh, my idea is to use every single game to prove our desire to succeed and a little bit to revenge. Thank you. Thank You're you very much. Good luck uh, with your next step in your career. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We need everybody. Yeah. <laughs>